Hi everyone, I'm Lisa and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today's card is for a baby. Yeah, baby season seems to be the spring for some reason, at least in my family. And I was getting in that mood of making baby cards and I wanted to share one with you today. It uses lots of layers, but it's easy to put together. I'll have all the cutting dimensions for today's card over on my blog. So if you're looking here from YouTube, you can go down to the description bar below and I'll have the link directly to there so you can get there easily. This is the card we're gonna create together. What do you say we get over to the stamp table and let's get started. We're gonna use the Moon Baby stamp set. Isn't this sweet? This is the image that caught my heart. So you know what, when I get a brand new stamp set, I always take it out and I try to make four or five different projects using it. It gets me really familiar with the pieces and it stretches my imagination. So today we're gonna use this one. I was like, I got an idea with this. Let's give that a whirl. Cute, cute stamp set. And you're gonna find it in the Occasions catalog. We're also gonna be using some designer series paper and that is from the Succulent Garden Designer Series Paper Pack. And you're thinking, succulent garden with a baby card? Oh yes, Stampin' Up! Designer Series papers are double-sided. So one side may be the succulents and the other side is a nice pattern that can be used all year round. It's a great way to maximize your purchase. While we've got a clear table, we're gonna start with the big shot and we're gonna emboss the first layer, which is a piece of Whisper White cardstock. I'm using the basic platform. This is the new one that came out about a year ago. It doesn't have the tabs on it. So if you have the tabs, that's totally fine. This is the one I'm using. Clear mat will go on the bottom to protect that. And then I'm gonna use the Lucky Stars embossing folder. You can see this is well loved and well used in my stamp room. I love the pattern because it's great not just for, of course, baby cards, but great for birthday and celebration as well. So my white card stock's gonna go inside the folder and I'm gonna place that here on my mat and then another clear cutting mat over the top. That just protects your whole project, kind of what I call a sandwich. And then I'm just cranking this through. So here we've got our embossing folder and now we have our beautifully embossed cardstock. One side is de-embossed. You'll see like the stars go down and the other side, the stars are raised. It's really up to you on which side you want to use, but today I went for the de-embossed side. That white piece is gonna be layered on a piece of sweet sugar plum cardstock. And again, remember all the cutting dimensions are over on my blog. If you're viewing from YouTube, you can find those on the description bar below and you can just click right on there. It'll take you right there. And I'm gonna mount this piece right here. Grabbing my snail adhesive, I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna add adhesive to the back. Whenever I'm adhering an embossed piece, I like to provide a little bit more adhesive to try to cover all those bumps and valleys. That's gonna get centered here on the card front. Now I'm gonna set that aside and now we're gonna work on the panel. I have a piece of Whisper White cardstock here and I've cut a piece of that designer series paper we just talked about. That's gonna end up getting mounted here. What I did though to kind of help myself is I grabbed a pencil and I made a little mark on where this would fall. So I kind of knew where my stamped image was going to need to be. Now I know it's difficult to see on the camera because it's just a little pencil mark, but I don't want it to show and I can easily erase it when I'm done. Because I don't want a really dark, dark image, I chose to use basic gray over basic black ink for this. And I'm gonna take my little critters and I'm gonna ink those up in the basic gray pad. And I'm gonna stamp them so that their tummies are gonna come right on that pencil line because I don't need the bottom half for the card I'm creating today. I'm gonna bring you in just a little closer so that you can see better. And I'm just gonna center my image and I'm looking and I'm like, yeah, that looks about right. And then I'm gonna stamp. Firm, even pressure and a lift. And you can see my dot runs really well there. So I'm gonna hold this up and say, yep, that's gonna be good. Now listen, if that doesn't work for you, flip your paper over. Don't you love that it's two-sided? You can hide all your mistakes and stamp again. While I have the ink pad out, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do this little strip, which is gonna be the banner of the card. And I'm using the words from the stamp set that say a little something for a little someone. And again, I'm gonna ink those up in my basic gray and I'm gonna stamp them right here in the middle of my banner. 
We're gonna do some coloring. I call this the fun part. We're gonna use some ink pads. And I've brought you in closer so that you can see really well. And I'm gonna apply that color using a blender pen. Now these come in a three pack. And if used properly, you should be able to get about 100 cards from each pen. There's a chemical in the barrel of the pen that moistens the tips. They're identical, so it doesn't matter which one that you use. They will get stained with usage over time. So you'll see how this one's got a little color here on the tip. That's fine. And I'm gonna show you how to clean it properly between use. So I've got some ink pads here. Let's start with Smoky Slate. I'm going to flip the ink pad over and I'm going to squeeze it. And that's going to put a residual amount of ink here inside the lid. That's where you're always going to want to watercolor from because that's safe for your aqua painter as well as your blender pen. I don't ever recommend that you put that directly on your ink pad. So I'm going to take a little color here and you're going to see this is a strong color. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to kind of water it down here on the side. And this is going to be for my little sheep. So I'm going to color in his ears and you can see these areas are really really tiny and this is one reason why I loved using my blender pen for this and not my aqua painter. The bristles on my aqua painter are kind of wide and it's hard for me to get in there. Now remember we're not going to see a lot of this so we don't have to go crazy. I'm going to water this down even further and I'm just going to give him a little bit of a hue of color over his face and body just so he's not too completely white. Now I know sheep are white but we're going to give him a little pizzazz when we're done. I'm happy with that. I want to stop. So I'm going to close up my ink pad and set that aside. We're going to change colors and this is how you're going to do it. You're going to hold the blender pen horizontally and you're going to turn it and roll it on your grid paper. That's going to make sure that any color on the pen now has been removed. Once it runs clear, you are good to go to switch colors. I'm going to use Sweet Sugar Plum next. I'm going to give that a little squeeze and I'm going to open this up. And I'm going to pick up color just like I did before. And this time I'm going to color in my bunny. You're probably thinking, ew, what, a dark bunny? Yeah, why not? It's a baby cart. So you see how I'm laying the darkest color on the outside and I'm pulling it to the inside. That's going to give me um, some variation in my tones. I don't want my card to be too, too dark because I want to lend some credence to the pastels of this card. And we might see some of his body. So I'm going to go ahead and color him in. Do you see how I'm stretching that color out? I'm not putting a lot of new color um, down unless I absolutely need to. And that's going to give us some definition, some shading. I'm going to close that one up, set that one aside. Again, we're going to clean the brush, roll it, your pen on the table. Those brush tips you want to keep nice and pointy and fine. The one thing you don't want to do is this because over time the fibers in this pen will split and the tip will become very, very wide. And it's going to be hard to get in those little tiny places. So let's go for some brown tones now for our bear. And this is crumb cake and I'm squeezing that as well. And I'm going to pick up some color here. Again, I'm watering it down. It's very concentrated from the ink pad, so I don't want it too dark. And then I'm gonna color in my bear, so I've got my ears, and I'm gonna take what's left and I'm scribbling in his face, okay? You see how we've got some variation here in color. So the same thing here, I'm gonna do his little arms. I'm gonna stretch him out all the way over here and a little bit of his tummy in case it shows. And that's good, I'm happy with that. But I wanted some areas on my bear a little bit darker. So I'm going to use chocolate chip next. And again, cleaning my blender pen. These are lighter shades, so you're probably not going to see it come off on my paper. But trust me, this is a really important step as you use your pen with different shades. I'm going to squeeze that again. Same type of process. See how dark this ink is? So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of ink. And we've got to make sure that we get a whole bunch of that off. We don't want it to be too, too dark. This is for his muzzle. And I'm going to hold this up for you in a second. And I'm going to do a little bit inside his ears just for some definition. All right, that's about all I need. This is just a really tiny image, but there you go. You see how we've got some shading going on? And that was easy to use with the blender pen tip. Cleaning it off one more time. Can you see now how the color's coming off? But I want to make sure that I'm turning it. Color will bleed down on your pen. So if you don't turn it, you'll end up with one side that's dirty. I'm going to do the stars and I'm going to do it in mint macaron and I'm going to flip that over, do the exact same thing. Here, I'm going to pick up my ink again, watering it down a little bit, and then I'm going to color in my star. And the exact same thing. It's going to be darker on one side, lighter on the other. So now all the coloring is finished. 
Before you put your pen away, really important to clean it off. There's nothing worse than grabbing it to use it and you find it's dirty when you put it back and now you've got a mess. Designer paper is going to go next, so I'm going to put adhesive on the back side. And I'm going to mount that here. This is a little bit damp from that uh, blender pen. That's how the chemical spreads the ink. So I just want to be careful I don't get my card too wet. And I'm going to mount that here. The pencil mark is really not even going to be noticeable in a few minutes when we go to um, add the, the banner. So I'm not even going to bother erasing it, but I should comment on that. If you are going to erase it, make sure you do it before you color it. It will come off, but you don't want to remove some of the ink from that slightly damp paper from the blender pen. The rest is just layers. This is easy. All right, so we've got a piece of mint macaron. We're color coordinating here by bringing the colors together. And that's going to go here, leaving a very thin border around here. More adhesive on the back. And then I'll go on a piece of sweet sugar plum. This one's a little bit wider than the last one. And that'll just give us a really nice focal point for the card. So here's the card base, ready? And now let's do that last piece, which is the banner. Remember we stamped it. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna add adhesive to this strip. And that is going to get mounted here on another piece of mint macaron paper. And I wanna make sure that I've got my edges as close to even as possible, which I think I do. All right, I'm gonna grab my paper snips and we're gonna create a banner tip. The easiest way to do this is to make a slit in the center and then you're going to cut from the tip to the slit on both sides. By making the slit first, you're pretty much guaranteeing that your banner tip is going to be even. Now we're going to do the same thing on this side. We'll make a slit and from the outside corners to the top of my slit. Oh, I got a little zealous there, didn't I? That's okay, I don't think it's really gonna show. All right, so now we've got our banner. Let's go ahead and put this together. We're gonna use some dimensionals. I'm gonna take those off and I put one in each of my four corners. I'm always cognizant that this is gonna go through a mail meter when it gets mailed. So I'm gonna take off my paper backings. Uh, my nails are short, so I like to press here in the center. That helps lift up those corners to take that paper off, which reveals the other sticky side. And remember the base of our card. That's gonna go here, I'm gonna mount this right in the center. And then remember our banner, here we've got our banner. So now we're gonna mount that here. I like dimensionals, I really do. I think that they give your project that really professional 3D look. But if you don't like that, you can go ahead and just adhere him. And for today, I'm gonna to do that. I'm just gonna adhere these right here to the center. And I'm gonna come up a little bit, so make sure if I have any pencil mark or that edge is gonna be easily covered. But look, we've got a star that shows. You know what, we're gonna to have to go back and color that. Has that ever happened to you? Let's do that really quick. That's easy to do. I wanna make sure that I've, I've got that uh, little star, got some color on it. We don't want him to be naked on that card. And again, making sure that your blender pen is nice and clean when you put it away. All right, there we go, that's better. And now we're gonna mount our banner. So at least our star's got a little bit of color. And I'm gonna press. Cute as it is, but you know me, we gotta have some bling, yes we do. I am using the metallic enamel shapes. You're gonna get gold and silver in the package, and here's what I love about these. You're gonna get different size circles, hearts and stars, which is really versatile, so that you're gonna get a lot of bang for your buck here, and they're inexpensive. So I'm gonna use some stars just to coordinate with my background, so I'm gonna use my paper piercing tool. There's already glue dots on the back, which is gonna make life really fun and easy. So I'm gonna add another one right here. You know what, let's mimic that star. Guess we didn't have to color it in after all, did we? And I'm gonna add another one here, down here near the bottom. And I'm gonna add one of my smaller circles, let me pick that up and I'm gonna add that one here. So now we've got a little bling in our card. Cute, cute, huh? So you see how the banner here is flat. On this one, originally, look, my banner is raised. This one is up on a dimensional. I've got one more card to show you. 
This one I actually created first and I used some sequins from the metallic sequins assortment and I punched from the confetti stars border punch and attached those with fine tip glue. It doesn't have the border around it, but I actually did use a sponge to add some of that mint ink. And do you see how here we have the border this time? Well, they're all really different, aren't they? Which one do you like the best? I would love to know. Please leave me a comment. And when you head over to my blog, make sure you click on the online classes tab. I have some awesome classes there for you as well as PDF tutorials and stamps in the mail. Thanks so much for joining me everyone and I hope to see you next time. Have a great day.